Yo ho ho! What's going on, boys? This is Grim Reaper bringing you another One Punch Man review. Today we're covering chapter 148. Another spectacular, great entry in the series of One Punch Man. Now, to get it started, <clears throat> as you know, we're, we've now reached a climax in the story plot. The overarching arc is the Monster Association Invasion, where the monsters have decided to attack the humans for whatever perilous reason Psychos has decided. But she managed to coalesce all the strength of the dragons into one assault, into one grouping to actually work together. And this is the result. All the destruction of Z-City and, and all kinds of power displays and feats. But one of the underlying storylines underneath all that part, underneath all that craziness, has been the arrival and the flourishing of Goro, the hero hunter. Going through every single stance from... Every, from, excuse me, every single rank from down to tank top and other average A and B rank heroes that got in the way all the way up now to Silver Fang Bang himself. Now we've seen the difficulties of the journey along the way, whether it's encountering a guy like Metal Bat, whether it's having a surprise tank top, whether it's getting beat down by Watchdog, whether it's um, having to face the Demon Cyborg, or whether it's the first confrontation with, um, with Bang. Goro has done a lot when encountering the heroes. We most recently saw him get the boost that's closest to what we have now. This boost, when he fought Darkseid, another extreme. It didn't necessarily beat him, but it showed us the potentials of Goro. It showed us who he was now capable of going toe-to-toe -to -toe with, and he outclassed Darkseid in terms of combat. He literally put fear in This is the end of the line. Girl Storyline began through rebellion. He rebelled from his master. He rebelled from the dojo because he felt he had nothing else to learn. He beat all the rest of his disciples, and he just left. But this is the true test. The entire time, there have been several individuals, or several instances, excuse me, that have proven that Bang's prerogative has not been necessarily to beat Goro, but to stop his rampage. And now we're getting the final confrontation. The first time was interrupted by Phoenix Man and her centipede. Here, it doesn't seem like the heroes are in the situation or in the or are in the position to be threatening Garo like that. On the contrary, Bang was on his back, exhausted, trying to save Tape Top. Excuse me, Bomb was on his back, exhausted, trying to save Tape Top. Now we have Bang in here stepping up after almost getting overwhelmed by Black Sperm. The situation is getting perilous. So. As much as, as hype as this fight has been, as hype as Goro's first interest has been, this is really where it's supposed to climax, or at least give us an indication as to where Goro's storyline is going to go to, right? This is the monster form Goro. The majority of his journey has been detailed with instances of him talking about becoming a monster, wanting to be a monster, wanting to emulate monsters, wanting to fight for the monster side. And slowly he, became, he began to become more and more like it. Whether it was first him eating literally like uncooked flesh of monsters to like just starting to lose a lot of his like appearance, his human appearance. Like Goro is, I don't know if you remember, but Goro didn't look like this before. He looked like a regular guy. He's unrecognizable now. It's not like there's like, he didn't put clothes on. He didn't put like a suit on. This is some like tech. This is what Goro looks like now. We implicated, we thought, we questioned about whether Goro would actually turn into a monster. And it seems like this is exactly what's happened. Some people are saying that he's not far gone. That, like, it's different. I mean, we can still see his mouth. We saw him open his mouth when he was screaming or whatever. That's still the same. But where are the rest of the characteristics of Goro? Like, you can't even tell that his hair is different from the rest of his body. This is a truly monstrified individual. Now, this is important to, to say this before we get to the rest of this chapter because this fight is not just about, like, the complex and, like, the hand-to-hand -hand stuff that's been going on, like we saw in the bam bomb instance. I will, in the reread that we just did, when I reread re the fight, I, what hit me wasn't the fact that it was cool or badass or any of the attacks that were going on in the sequence. It was the fact that, like, this is supposed to be Bang's confrontation, like... Not only is Bang supposed to go all out here, he put out the abandonment breathing form, but it's against his disciple. Like, he's telling him, hey, man, like, 
He's in his dialogue. It's almost as if you can still get like hints that Bang wants to save him, even in this instance right now. You have to question like, when is it gonna be too far gone? When is it gonna like? When is it gonna be too much? Is he could have killed Tank Top? Could have killed Metal Bat? We say that Metal Bat could have killed him too, sure, but. Could have killed the A and B class heroes. Like, at a certain point, this is just reckless. I don't know how it's going to turn out, man. Because, to be honest, I want Goro to stay in the storyline indefinitely. But I don't want some, like, Naruto, like, conversation to happen to where Goro is convinced that what he's been doing is wrong. Like, he needs to be beaten. The problem is that if we go on a path where he needs to be beaten, and he doesn't, like, get talked down to, there's a guy who's going to beat him <laughs> pretty bad. K. Baldi ain't no dope. He may get past Bang. He may deal with Atomic. He may even overcome Darkshine. He, he may even... There's nobody else there. Everybody else is weak and retired. Just the attack force of the association right now. So, if they don't handle Goro, it's quickly going to spiral into a Kate Baldy needs to be here situation. And then what? He's just going to like beat him close to death and then he's going to come back and then be all nice or whatever? No, like, what happens to Goro after the storyline? may have just been answered by his monstrification. I'm not implying that this is the most monstrified form we have, but whenever he fought Dark Shrine, he didn't look like this. He didn't look like this. He came out there, big cut, these are big strong, breaking them chains, beating down Pooty Pooty. But now, bro, it looks like a jet, dog. Like, everybody's been calling him all different kinds of things. Like, I love the design, it's amazing. But he's monstrified. To the opposite of Goro, like, Staying in the storyline after this arc, joining the joining the Hero Association, like not being evil because we still have those hints there. We still have those grains of sand, those seeds. I know we're in an instance in terms of story plot and our mindsets that like this is just Goro's rampage, right? We're gonna see him go through the gauntlet. Don't worry, I'm mind up there too. That's where my head is at too. Like I'm, I'm not worried about none of that emotional stuff, none of that like future stuff. I'm just worried about Goro running through everybody that's on this battlefield right now, monster or hero. That's what I want to see. That's what I want to see. But I also have hopes for the character later on. And if there is no later on, like how can you talk to this guy? This guy's a monster. <laughs> this guy's a monster, bro. Like anyone you get into the secrets of the fight, right? So first off, we can say that like um, this is a, 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 a abandonment or or awakened breath. It's how some people described it here. Um, this is the technique that Bang's using, right? So a declaration of his full power. We saw him take his stance, take his shirt off, and do the whole thing up against uh, the centipede, right? Whenever um, Bomb told him, hey, man, we're not going to get out of here. So he decided to just face him head on. There was some dialogue alluding to this awakened breath being stronger than Bomb. And I'm going to make this clear. The only reason why we have any reason to say on the contrary is not only because of portrayal, which I'll elaborate in a second. But Murata mentioned in an exterior source, not in the manga, that Bomb was a stronger brother of the two. So, in believing that that's the truth, and in believing the context here that we have, which we just reread, chapter before this, 147, or 146, Bomb literally just, literally, as he finishes giving Tank Top energy so he can, like, be safe to heal up, Fubuki's tired, exhausted from doing it, like, literally, as they just finished doing it, Goro arrives. Bomb turns around and gets ready to fight. So it's not like Bomb wasn't in a, like... It's not even that he was weakened. He had just been weakened. Like, just, like, recently. Like, literally, cor the corresponding moment, the corresponding event was Goro arriving. Like, Bomb gave his energy away, his power away. He literally said, if only I could give him some of my power. And then Goro arrived. So, that's the controversy right now. That We, we don't know if it's reasonable to say... 
that Bang is stronger than Bomb because of his, com his presentation up against Goro right now. And we saw in a previous chapter with Bomb, Bomb got defeated by Goro in one chapter. It wasn't one sequence, but in one chapter. We got the beginning part of the fight, the rest of the chapter, then we got the end part of the fight, how the chapter ended. I I'm under the impression that, like, there wasn't... That the energy had nothing to do with that. Of course it had something to do with that. Like, even with the presentation that Bomb put on, it was still amazing and it was still incredible. So imagine if he was at full power. Imagine if he was in tip-top shape. We... That being said, I will make the caveat that we don't know what it really means to, like, give your energy to Tank Top Master, to help heal Tank Top Master, to do whatever it is that Pookie did with Tank Top Master. She's been doing all kinds of stuff. She was also involved in there, too. So we don't know the true burden of it. We know there was a great burden, which is why he was still tired. But we don't know how, how exhausted or how nerfed Bomb was. As a counter-argument to, you know, straw, to, to, excuse me, to steal him in the scenario in general, we could say that, the fact that Bomb was able to turn around, get on his feet, and then fight this hard meant that he wasn't that exhausted from giving Tank Top that energy. We, somebody could argue that, and I don't think it would be completely unreasonable to, to entertain a conversation or a debate that involved that reason. Yo, 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 chill out, chill out, bro. Um, that involved that reasoning. So that's, that's up in the air. That's why I call it controversy, because you guys can decide for yourselves. Remember the chapter 148? You can find the link in the Discord. The Discord link is in the description. Just join there. We talk about One Punch Man all the time, but you can use it to um to get the links. We have an entire text channel for that. Um, so that's that's the controversy there. That we see Bang go hand in hand, kick the kick, using the water stream effectively, efficiently, powerfully up against um up against Goro. And this is supposed to be his full power. It's impressive. This shows that not only is this Goro supposedly now confirmed stronger than Darkshine, but he may be able to put up a fight up against Bang and beat him. Bomb mentions that it looks like this guy got stronger, or he's getting stronger in me to fight, right? I pointed that out in the previous chapter as well whenever he fought Bomb because he learned... Remember, we talked about this in the review too. That the only time Goro had ever seen the whirlwind was when he first encountered um, a Bomb uh, up against Elder Centipede. When Elder Centipede arrived, arrived, uh, arrived in that scenario, um, uh, Bomb had used the whirlwind in that fighting, in that in that arena, in that city where they were in. So that's the only reasonable explanation as to why Goro would know of the whirlwind. Because he hadn't used it before then. And after that fight, coincidentally, we saw him use it up against Royal Ripper, um, up against Rover. Um, I think it was up against Oro Orochi even as well. I'm not sure, but he definitely implemented the whirlwind after he after that one instance, after that one encounter with a centipede, where Bomb happened to be there. Now here comes the second time where he encounters Bomb and he uses the whirlwind. At the beginning of the previous chapter, 147, we see um Bomb do like a little whirlwind thing and then Goro jumps out of the way and it leaves the ground all like in like circular layers. That's where he learned it. Just seeing that is how he was able to evolve to the point where he was able to cancel out the whirlwind in front of the master. Cancel out the master's whirlwind. Point blank in mid-combat. Without any training, without anything else. That's why. This not only, like, I pointed out the fact that it's reasonable because he trained with it. As I mentioned before, he's been using, for the first time when he saw the world one, he had used it multiple times. Which is why, to me, it's not just completely out of the ordinary that he would be able to see the Master do it one more time and then be able to cancel out the Master. It's It goes to give more credence to Goro because now his learning capabilities, his adaptability in combat, his ability to integrate, to see, learn, and integrate uh, um, combat skills like on an instant, has grown, has, imp has improved. He's now even more capable with that. I wouldn't say it's an Orochi's level. Orochi saw, like, <laughs> the water stream and then <laughs> was as capable as Goro was off of one look. Maybe it's there, maybe it's more so. Who knows? Who wants to see it? But we're starting to get to that point. It's starting to show you that even Goro's ability to learn has <laughs> increased dramatically to the point that he's he's learning from masters high s class we're not talking about low s class anymore we're not talking about arguable demons where this guy went from a demon to a dragon whether he was holding back we're talking about studs the strongest the the literal offense of the association right now 
the the association's offense is arguably outgunned right now in the presence of Goro. You're not going to tell me that Tatsumaki's going to have an easier time fighting than Bang right now. Even if Tatsumaki is in general stronger than Bang, you're pretty sure Bang can fight Tatsumaki right now, maybe even beat her. Same thing for, for maybe even Geno, maybe not. He's more tired as well. But Bomb as well, too. Atomic Samurai, he's less tired than, than, um, than Tatsumaki. I'm pretty sure he could do it, too. Like, Dark Shine as well. Like, these guys are the offense of the association. And they're all, all reasonably under beatable by Goro under that umbrella. Under the umbrella that's labeled beatable by Goro. That anyone under that umbrella, underneath that umbrella, can be beaten by Goro. Atomic, um, Bang, Bomb, Dark Trend are all under there because of this, this association. The weapon users are not yet declared yet. We don't know yet about um, the extremes of Atomic and Flashy. I'm not, I'm not going to just declare that outright even though I said it. I agree with it because it should all be relative. Like, Atomic isn't that much stronger than Bang. Like, no. They're, he's powerful as hell. This sword will be a great addition as we're going to talk about in a little bit. But I don't believe that they're just, just like levels, levels, levels way stronger than Bang. So, here it is, man. Like, literally, by by Goro matching Bang while he's in his awakened breath, we're arguably talking about Goro being able to overcome the entire offense of the association right now. And don't get me wrong. It's not like Goro was just monopolizing the fight. We saw two or three times already where Bang, uh, Bang, Bomb, and Dark. So we got a, we have uh, trio picks. And um, I even thought about making it a thumbnail. If you come to the Discord, you can see the pictures that I made for it. But you can see all the times where like the guys use like shoulder thrust or shoulder tackles to send Goro flying. Bomb did it, Bang did it, and Darkshine did it. And every single time, they couldn't handle it. So it shows that these guys do still have somewhat superior power to to Goro. And that may be Goro, uh, um, one of Monata's way of depicting more Goro growth. To the point to where they won't even be able to match his physical strength. Juggernauts like these guys. We know that Dark Shine probably has more physical strength and power than Bang and Bomb knew. But maybe not. Maybe not. Um So yeah, it was the the sequences of, of Bang of uh Bang and Goro were, were pretty badass. We saw the flip how Bang kept like, hitting them back and forth until he threw them in the air and then um Girl managed to counter that and slam him head first to the ground like a pile driver. It looked badass. It looked amazing. Like, and then we could see the badass uh, spread of Goro, like just hitting there, just ah, monster fighting, screaming. Like, that's definitely cover page worthy or thumbnail, per whatever, whatever you want to put it, is worthy of that. But you can put it in your screen server too, but it's, I'm messing with it, right? It's worthy of that. But um, there were some more devastating portions of the story that happened here, and this is game changing. Don't get me wrong, we've seen. Plenty of characters die in this series. We've seen plenty of monsters and heroes, protagonists, antagonists, die in the series. Whether it was Hammerhead, um, Hammerhead's boy, excuse me, not Hammerhead. Um, who else has died? Uh, we've seen people die. <laughs> and the, uh, the one of the support squad members got shot through the chest thing by um, by uh, even under water. Like we've seen people die. Get me wrong, but. The gruesomeness of the deaths and who happens to be dying is what blew the alarm in this instance. Now, we could talk about the Sword Saints almost obviously being brought into the storyline for this for this example or for this situation in particular. I did find it odd or weird that like they would be the ones that come in as backup randomly. It was foreshadowed. Some of did go to them directly and ask for assistance in going after Goro, but he didn't really ask them to come and help when it came to this uh, uh, event with the association. I don't even think the time I told them about it. So I guess they just heard a commotion and decided to come help, decided to come to where the other problem was. Remember, the, the news was being broadcast throughout the city, throughout everywhere. We saw it in the news. We even saw helicopters above trying to be like, oh, what is the shield coming down? Is it done? Is it over? And people were like, yay, hooray. But the fight wasn't over. And there was still some crazy stuff going on here. And as we see. So, I guess that's the plausible reasoning as to why the swordsmen showed up. We know they weren't especially called. Unless I'm forgetting some of the detail like that. But, you still had some hope for them. Because, 
as we were given context to this story, as we were given the context um, of their plot in the story, this chapter just now, that they've existed for gathering these two swords for a prophetic swordsman. That's technically been the goal of sword saints. Now, how Gidi, I believed, or any cheating mentioned, that it was also their goal to coalesce their powers together, to work together. That was another general mission of the of the sword saints, strongest users. But it just it seems like a waste. Like don't get me wrong. Like I like the death. It's a good added note to the story. But death without purpose is the same as not dying. I'm not saying that there wasn't like reasonable, like a reasonable purpose for this. Like, this not only adds to Fury or Good's count on the Monster King race, but this character was already one of the most brutal in the series. Like, it fits his character. But the previous instances that we got of like a Mind Mask and Tank Top Master, they didn't die. They also suffered the brutality of, of um of Fury Ugly, and they ended up not dying. So it just shows like the favorality. I mean, that's not a word. How Murata and one favor certain characters that are clearly going to be uh, clearly going to be retained in the story. Like I know he's a mainstay. I know Tank Top's going to be a, a, a main character the entire time. He's in S class. But like, come on! Like, if you're going to treat him like that, just actually kill him. There are other people that can take his spot. Like, and don't get me wrong. I know that he's a big piece. If there's going to be anybody to remove, you may not want to be him. Because of how he's connected to so many of the different characters and the insta big plot in the tank top army and the whole tank top facade me. And I like it. It's funny. It's a good addition to the story. I, I don't want it to be removed. I'm just saying, like, this could have been a more effective death, more effective way to show the impact and the craziness of this battle, the ferocity of Fear Ugly. And you didn't have to kill them both, kill them all, excuse me. Because they could have served a different purpose. Like, why even bring them all? Like, now there is no sword council. Is it just going to be Atomic Samurai and Spring Mustachio? Any, any, on? Kamatachi Bushiro? Like, we never met Zombai student. We never met uh, Abadamai student. Like, those are students. Was so it the same as, like, Atomic? Like, I don't know. I guess they're just going to cancel out that. Uh, I don't know. It also adds more context or it gives Atomic Samurai's story a bigger plot line. We have one for Drive Knight who's somewhat connected with Genos, right? Genos has one. And it's a more expanding one about someone who killed his family. Metal Knight's somewhat involved with that as well, too. Ted Emperor doesn't really have one, but he's kind of been given one to a certain extent a little bit. And the whole growth thing and maturity thing. So I can see them trying to add larger, more retainable more in-depth storylines or story plots to these characters that'll be unraveled later on. But damn, bro. You gotta kill all his boys, bro. Take his blade away too, bro. Like, they've been going after Atomic this arc, bro. Now, first it was taking him with the FAS, bro. Then they had um the Atomic uh, G5 tank, G5 score tank the Atomic Slash. Then... You had um, him not be able to, like, jump up and cut Hirochi while she was flying. Which isn't that crazy. Then you had, um... Yeah, that's really it. Thomas and Bottom besides that. I sure you had some difficulty with Black Sperm, but, like, who wouldn't have difficulty with Black Sperm? Look, look like... <laughs> like, look. <laughs> who wouldn't, man? <laughs> who wouldn't, man? And now we're trusting the topic. I really think the topic's gonna be the one to do it. I think it's time to be the one to take care of Golden Sperm. I do. I'm going to discuss that more in depth with the boys in the podcast. It should come out tomorrow, so check that out. Keep your eye out for that. Um, Around, like, 4 p.m. Eastern Time? 3 p.m. Eastern Time? 3 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, One Punch Man podcast tomorrow. But, like, this has been, like, all of them. Like, how about Ame? Nititing. Zombie. All to vomit fear ugly. And don't get me wrong, like... Well, no, let me not say don't get me wrong. I'm somewhat confused or, like, out of, I don't know how I'm supposed to fear or what's supposed to happen next because... 
this poison has been a problem. As of last chapter, this poison was re like really became a problem. And not only like melted the offense of two of our strongest fighters in the cheating and uh, um, in Atomic Samurai, but then it also incapacitated um, Dark Shot to the point that where he's screaming on the ground, melted his hands when he attacked him as well too. He even managed to attack Black Sperm. So Valmody was like rampaging and pretty much put everybody out of out of commission because Bang wasn't going to be able to do anything to Valmody Fury Ugly without. Suffering the same consequences as a dark shine. Genos had some hopes, but like, who's to say what was what was really gonna happen with that? We still don't know of the instance between Pig God and Genos if they really did encounter um, this acidic digestive fluid, or if they just encountered something else, or saliva, or whatever it was that they encountered, whatever they got they got swallowed up. Same thing for dark for Tank Top Master. So we don't know about that yet. We don't know if they were if they are gonna be immune to the poison as well either. But now this chapter, like. Black Sperm was the one to overcome it. Like, it doesn't downplay or, or take stock away from Vomit If You're Ugly, but it takes attention away from Vomit If You're Ugly. Vomit If You're Ugly. Like, all the hype and all the, like, the praise that Vomit was getting, bro, and I'm talking about a Discord for days. People were complaining that we're talking about Fear Ugly so much. They're like, damn, bro, I want to get out of the Fear era. When is this Fear arc going to end, bro? Niggas were tired of us hyping up and dropping random facts about gums and Fear Ugly and Pig God and how, like, they were really, they, they really have feats, bro. Like, even doing the reread, too, like, gums is a super duper tank, bro. And, and Fear, bro, Fear is ferocious. Do a reread, Fear is truly ferocious. He has speed. He definitely has speed and he has power. The fact that he's just sitting there like, they're both very, very competent dragons. They're not like average low dragons or even mid dragons. We could talk about them being in the high dragon category, especially Gums as well. And all the dragons, sure, there's got to be someone you have to disregard. Oh, some, they can't all be high dragons. They really can. Half of them really can be high dragons. That's really what we're talking about. We're talking about Goketsu, Elder Centipede. Um, <laughs> Fear Ugly when it gets to him. Uh, uh, Rover. Black Sperm, uh, possibly Homeless Emperor. Like, we're talking about a lot of these guys being able to reach that high dragon ca uh, capacity or at least having attacks or, or situations where they can reach high potency. I'm not saying that they're going to be in that high dragon state all the time. Sure. Maybe we'll give them even that instance of Fear and Gums, right? Gums' offense isn't crazy that way, so he shouldn't be in the high dragon category. Fear Ugly's. F that. Fear Ugly is crazy and dirty, bro. Vomit of Fear Ugly is disgusting. Look what he just, but we just talked about the bones. We just saw Dark Shine's bones. We saw the bones in his hand. That's why he's screaming on the ground. Eek, eek, eek. That's, that's why that's happening. So, don't get me wrong. I'm not mad about the deaths. They had impact. But kill tank top too, bro. Now, now the sword saints have no storyline. I'm not saying this, I'm gonna complain about what's gonna happen next, but I kind of like the fact that they were like a council of swordsmen or a certain thing like that, that like were doing stuff. There were other things besides the hero association getting things done. You know, whole ninja association too. We probably could, possibly got a whole line of vampires stuff like that. I like more outside lore as being built in the background. This just kills it. And in in. Thomas Hammer wasn't that emotional about killing out of Giddy. He was upset about it. Let me wrong. But he told Pooty Pooty like I just had to kill my best friend. Like this was a matter of fact, like it happened. Like I understand it happened and I gotta get past it. So now Zamba and he's cheating and about Ame. About Ame trying to save him doing it. If you want some good actual development, now is the time to see you know, Tom Atomic Samurai get mad or like put in some work or something like that. Like we have to see an emotional response from Atomic Samurai, and that would be fitting. Instead of like forcing in some child emperor zombie man stuff, this would be fitting emotional development for the character, emotional turmoil that could spur on some strength or some matter of action. But we, this chapter didn't just hold emotional impact; it was also disgusting too. So we get vomit if you're ugly, like just sucking up the remains of Nichiri and Abarame. Just disgustingly, like. 
uh, like sucking up the, the 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 pool of black sperm. Excuse me, not not uh, not but I mean like it's gross. Now the what happened to me is that the 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 numerosity, just the the sheer vast number of black sperm, really made me like. It really makes you remove the consequence of killing a single black sperm, right? Because he's not going to do anything. There's so many more. He's not down. Like, they're killing black sperm left and right, and he's still just, just as a menace as he was in the beginning. So it really doesn't seem like a big deal when somebody pops a black sperm. But it is a big deal to black sperm. And that's what I had to, like, that's what I, I reassured myself. I had to take notice to in the reread, at least. Like, that's why I thought, I'm like, hey, man, like, you're so, like, petty. Like, anybody says anything to you, like, he's the type of black sparrow spends his time talking shit, talking junk. And then whenever somebody talks junk back, he just turns into his big golden form. Like, but, hey, that's what it is, bro. This guy's sensitive, bro. Like, <laughs> like <laughs> uh, you say it's that, but I guess he doesn't take nicely to be an attack. That's, that's an attack. So we got to remember that black sperm is part of a whole, so... That it makes sense as to why that would be like, um, I, I'll just leave it at that. That's the reasoning. He's still fragile. He's still got a weak ego, but it makes sense that he gets vomited on. It takes him out some of his clones. So now he's going to fight. And this is, this is, he put in that work right away. He worked fear, but I want to see more, bro. To be honest, the fact that people didn't put that much of the hype on how Vomit had just matched a double bazooka, a double super ally bazooka from Darkshine, that helps to downplay Black Golden Sperm. That's why I think that whenever I'm hyping somebody up, like, at least declare that you, like, understand why I'm hyping it up or, like, oh, I see why you're here. Because a lot of people just argue or a lot of people just, like, just play devil's advocate, like, excuse me. It, it, it does nothing but like take away from the story. Like, if at least re like read the story to enjoy it. Don't read it for like verses. Don't read it for debates. Like read the story to enjoy it. And when you do that, you'll be able to notice all the little things that they're adding in there. All the little Easter eggs. All the different connections. All the different like callbacks and intricacies are going back and forth. As you can connect, like there's a bunch of that. There's a bunch of little Easter eggs like that that you can see, and that are bigger plots and a bigger story. If you pay attention to, oh, it makes sense to why that happened. Golden sperm putting their hands on vomited fear or ugly didn't look that crazy in this chapter. It didn't. But it has crazy context because we had just seen not only Va not only Fury Ugly speed blitz um Bang when he was mid air after coming through uh gums, just speed blitz him from behind because Bang came from behind him, came from behind uh, Fury Ugly and just took out gums. So Fury was like, "Fool!" Hopped up there and was about to take out um uh Bang and then Bang deflected it just in time. So Fury is fast. Not to mention him getting speed blitz by by uh, uh by Darkrai last chapter from behind again. Turning around and then matching the super double bazooka with his own a uh, 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 caving punch. He's fast as hell. We have the power. It's a super double bazooka. We know the power is there too. He has all the capabilities. Excuse me. He has all the feats to declare and confirm that vomit if you're ugly is fast. This is why Golden Sperm is badass. This is why Golden Sperm is like, he's, bro, like. Here's what's going through my head right now currently. We saw what the extreme was when he splits. Just, just so many of them. There's just too many of them. So many of them. Innumerable. Are you telling me that those tsunami numbers are in this one form? I don't know. I don't know. I'm asking, are there more black sperms spread around, running around? If so, this is crazy. In the reread, I believe in chapter 147, 146, we see the instance of, it was 147, we see the instance of the Kaiju Black Sperm not only catching Tatsumaki, but then another one smacking Genos down from behind. Just big form, big strong forms, right? And then you see a bunch of little small sperms scattered around everywhere, still fighting and holding people off, right? That's an army. 
still in the army. It's regular foot soldiers, your bigger, stronger cavalry units or whatever. Then you got your, your giant elephant units or whatever. Can there be multiple golden sperms? Bro, imagine like six. I know, I know the other ones. We didn't get that many of them. Imagine six, six of these guys, one for every single S class. We saw it in Naruto. It can be done. <laughs> Madara was talking shit to the Kagades. He's like, "Hey, it's five and one. You're the greatest ever. It's it's only fair." And then Madara's like, "All right, I'm gonna make five clones, five wood clones for every single one of y'all. Hey, it's five and one. It was a Kagades. It's only fair." <laughs> hey, bro. We're trying to win the fight of the fittest. When he cheated into that big little slash, that big slash of city to attack, Home was in the corner smirking when Sperm was getting squished by him. And Sperm was actually sitting there just putting that work on him. Home was sitting there smirking, bro. Scheming, talking about some A. Hey, I'm going to let Sperm just body these boys. Not even these boys. The whole civilization, bitch. And I'm going to come and carpet bomb his ass and take him out right after. That was a scheme. That's the scheme, bitch. It would not, I would, it would not be unfair, or unreasonable for black sperm to make six golden sperms, and then have them fight every single one of the S class. Everybody else, have this guy fight Fear, have one of the guys fight Homeless, have somebody fight Atomic, have somebody fight Tatsumaki, have somebody fight um um. Uh, <laughs> you have to fight Goro. You have to fight Goro, bitch. <laughs> Bro, so there's still there's still hella fire that can come from this. Still hella fire that can come from this. Before we head out though, we got the special uh, uh, mention. Um, well, we I already mentioned in the beginning about the the blades that were given to him. There's a moon blade and there's a sun blade. I was elaborating upon. It reads as this: <coughs> the sun blade and the moon blade. It is said that the warrior who wields both will obtain unparalleled power as the sword's master. Bringing that legend to reality is the Council of Swordsmen, of Swordsmasters' last or long-standing mission. To bring those two swords together. Tomic Samurai has the moon blade. Or excuse me. Tomic Samurai has the sun blade. Sorry about that. Um, we don't know what it's gonna do. Uh, we don't. We don't. We don't know what it's gonna do. We don't know. We don't know. I'm not the biggest fan of just giving a sword, giving a weapon, it becomes stronger. This is a time like samurai. It's not like he doesn't already have the unparalleled skill. This is the fastest attacker that we have. I want you to see what this does. We should just see. Who knows? We'll see. That being said, stay tuned for the podcast tomorrow where we're going to be uh, comparing, contrasting a multitude of different ideas and a multitude of different instances that happen in the chapter. Stay tuned, man. Yo, ho! -ho!